Today, we're looking at a total car versus a salvage car. We'll see how car insurance companies decide whether to classify your car as total or not. We'll debunk top misconceptions people have on how much you'll get from your insurance company for your total car. And we'll see what you can do if your insurance gives you a low payout. So hop in and let's get going. So, what's the difference between a total car versus a salvage car? Put simply, a total car is generally one that would cost more to fix than it's worth. A car can also be deemed totaled if it can't be repaired safely or it can't be reasonably repaired at all. Let's say your car is several years old and its value today is $10,000. But then you get in an accident, so you take it to the shop for repairs. And a mechanic says it'll cost you $13,000 to fix it back to running order. Well, most car companies consider this a no-brainer and will declare your car as totaled since the repair cost exceeds the car's value. In this case, most insurance will offer a payout and reimburse you for your car's actual cash value, which, in this simple example, is $10,000 minus any deductibles, of course. ACV is how much the car is worth immediately before it got damaged. It's dependent largely on its make, model, age, mileage, and condition. Some states have laws that mandate the amount of damage that's necessary for a car to be considered as total. In other words, it's a percentage of the car's market value, otherwise known as total loss threshold or TLT. The threshold varies across U.S. states. For example, the TLT in Texas and Colorado is 100%, where it's 80% in Florida, 75% in New York and Tennessee, and 60% in Oklahoma. If you live in New York and your car's value is 20,000 bucks, well, remember, New York's TLT is 75%. That means that for repairs cost more than $15,000, then the car will be declared total. Say you take your car to the shop, mechanic says repairs will cost $14,000. In this case, since the repair cost is under New York's TLT, your insurer won't classify the car as total. Some states don't use the TLT method. Instead, they use the total loss formula, or TLF. Basically, it's the car's fair market value minus the salvage value. The salvage value is the car's value in its damage state. That includes, for example, the value of its parts and scrap metal. If the repair cost is more than the TLF, then the car insurer can declare it a total loss. California and Alaska, for example, use the TLF method. Let's say you're leasing your car. If your car is deemed totaled, then the insurer will pay the leasing company first. Or if you had a car loan, the insurer will pay the lender first before paying you. If your car is worth more than what you owe, then the insurer will pay you the balance. But what if you owe more than the car's worth? Unfortunately, you still owe the lender the difference. If you have gap insurance policy, which can protect you from that risk, you don't have to worry about it. But if you don't have that policy, then unfortunately it's tough luck because you still owe the lender the balance of the loan, even though you're out of a car that you can't drive. When an insurance company declares a car a total loss, it issues a salvage title or a branded title on the vehicle history report. Pretty much, you can think of it as a mark on a record that indicates the car was a total loss. Such cars cannot be legally driven on public roads in most U.S. states, which is the reason why most insurance won't sell you insurance for a car that is a salvage title. The salvage title stays in place until the car gets repaired and inspected. If it passes inspection, then the owner can get a rebuilt title, and then the car has a better chance of getting insured, registered, driven, and even sold. So what's a junk title? That's a car with damages that are so extreme that no one is allowed to ever rebuild the car. It's beyond hope. Ever wonder what happens to cars that are declared total? Insurance companies usually sell them to salvage yards or rebuilders that either repurpose the car's parts or rebuild them and then resell the car. If the car is severely damaged, then it gets sent to the scrapyard which will recycle its metal. Would it surprise you to hear that car recycling is a $25 billion industry in the United States alone? We're talking about some 12 million total cars that get recycled each year. In the U.S. and Canada alone, recycled cars produce enough steel to make 13 million new cars each year. Here's a common question. Can you keep your car if it's totaled? In most U.S. states, yes, you can keep and pay for your repairs yourself. In that case, your insurer will give you the cash value of the car minus deductibles and minus the amount your car could have been sold at a salvage yard. But all that said, in most cases, it's not worth keeping a total car because the cost to repair it outweighs the benefits. Another common question is, should you buy a car with a salvage title? Well, consider this. You'll have a lot of challenges finding a car insurer who will insure a car with a salvage title, even if the car was repaired and issued a rebuilt title. Another thing to consider is that car dealerships and used car buyers will find it challenging to assign the value to your car since they don't know the car's true condition. So this means the car very likely will get a lower resale value. So are there any benefits to buying a salvaged car? In most cases, the answer is no. There are generally more risks to 
salvage cars, then there are benefits. But that said, if you're able to buy the right car and have the right skills, there might be some benefits. For example, let's say there's a salvage car with only cosmetic damages, but it's otherwise reliable, such as one that's been in a hailstorm. I had many customers from Dallas, Texas, where they have a lot of hail, who got really good deals and they drove around with a dimple mobile after that. Now, in such cases, it might be worth it, especially if you're a skilled mechanic who's capable of repairing the car or using the car for parts, since salvage cars are much cheaper due to its title status. But if you're not a professional mechanic and you don't have the needed skills, but you're still insistent on getting this particular car, then at the very least, you should get the car thoroughly checked out by a professional to make sure there aren't any potential safety issues. You'll want to weigh the cost and ease of insuring such a car before you actually purchase it. Let's return to the actual cash value, or ACV. You'll recall that ACV is the amount the insurer will pay you if your car is totaled. Believe it or not, many people misunderstand what ACV is. Some people, unfortunately, expect the insurer to reimburse them for the price they paid for the car. But sadly, their understanding is incorrect. Others expect insurance to reimburse them for the cost of buying a replacement car the same make, model, and year. They're wrong, too. If there's one thing you learned from this video, just remember that insurance companies are required to pay the actual cash value, not the original price you paid for your car, nor the cost of buying a replacement car of the same make, model, and year. Also remember that cars depreciate immediately after you're driven off the lot. The average car loses 10% of its value the first month of ownership and over 20% in its first year. So even if you have a relatively brand new car, the ACV will probably be significantly lower than what you paid for your car in the first place. In fact, this is the reason why some people choose to purchase what's called new car replacement insurance. This coverage makes it possible for you to replace a recently purchased car that suffered damages without losing the money you initially spent on. Here's how it works. Let's say you bought a brand new car for 35 grand. Many months later, you get in an accident, your car gets totaled. If you didn't get new car replacement insurance, then you'll only be able to recover its latest appreciated value before the accident. Let's say it's $30,000. And remember, you're responsible for paying the deductible. In other words, you'll recover 30 grand minus your deductible. On the other hand, if you have new car replacement insurance, your insurer will reimburse you for a new model of the same vehicle. You still have to pay the deductible, of course, but the upside is you don't lose out on depreciation. There are some caveats, though. First of all, not all insurers offer new car replacement insurance. Those that do have different eligibility requirements. But in general, typically cars that are two years old or younger, or those that have been driven less than 15,000 miles, are usually eligible. But lease cars do not qualify for new car replacement insurance. Also, you can't combine new car replacement insurance with gap insurance. Another caveat is that new car replacement insurance is only available as an add-on as long as you purchase collision and comprehensive insurance. There are other rules and limitations, and different insurers have varying policies, so you'll want to consider the fine print either way. So should you get new car replacement insurance? insurance in case you total your brand new car. Well, no one could predict an accident. It's hard to say. For some people, it's worth the peace of mind. The average car is a five-year depreciation rate of 49.6%. Especially if your new car is a make and model that has a high depreciation value, it might be worth considering. But we're not done talking about actual cash value. What can you do if the insurer's ACV calculation is too low? In short, try to negotiate. Your best bet is to send a counter offer with evidence that justifies your car's value was worth more. You might want to include one of these independent appraisals, receipts or features you added before damages were incurred, and prices of comparable cars in your area. Sending a counter offer is the best and most strategic approach because most insurers don't want disputes to escalate, but let's say the insurer doesn't want to negotiate. Well, one option is to contact your state's insurance regulator and request for help. You can also ask the insurer for third-party arbitration if needed. The last option is to file a lawsuit, but in all honesty, the cost of filing a lawsuit isn't worth the reward, so I don't recommend at the end of the day, it's the insurance adjusters who determine whether or not to classify your car as total. Depending on the situation, a car that's total may be covered by comprehensive collision or property damage liability insurance. Let's look at a few different scenarios. If your car is totaled and the other driver is at fault, then his or her property damage liability insurance will pay for your car's value up to their policy limits. But if your car's value exceeds the at-fault driver's liability limits, then you have three options. You can file a claim using uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage, or file a lawsuit against the driver, or just cover the remaining costs yourself. But if you are at fault, you can file a collision claim on your insurer. If you don't have collision coverage, well, then your insurer owes you nothing. In that case, your best bet is to sell the car in its current state. You might still be able to recover at least a little something through its salvage value. You'll recall the salvage value is the amount of money that a salvage yard will pay you for the parts and frame. 
Collision insurance is not required by any state laws, but you will need to carry it if your car is leased or financed. General rule of thumb is that you should get collision coverage if you can't afford to replace your car and the annual cost of coverage is less than 10% of your car's value. But now you tell me, have you ever totaled your car? Whose fault was it? And how did the insurance handle it? If you have any funny or horror stories, which I'm sure you do, please share by commenting below. If you like this episode, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support.